Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nayaswami Padma, and I'm here today at noon to bring you the broadcast, the brief broadcast of the inspiration from the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. In this case, as it's laid out in Swami Kriyananda's autobiography, The New Path. I have a brief quotation again today. There was a member at a luncheon glancing at him and his disciples, Dr. Lewis and uh, Mrs. Lewis. Master, they inquired, was Dr. Lewis your first disciple in this country? Master's response was unexpectedly reserved. That's what they say, he replied quietly. His tone of voice, even more than his words, made such a marked contrast to the affability he had been showing that lady that she seemed quite taken aback. Noticing her surprise, Master explained more kindly, I never speak of people as my disciples. God is the Guru. They are his disciples. This is a very important point for the recognition of a true Guru. A true Guru never draws people to himself in the sense of to anything having to do with his ego or his sense of greatness or I have things to teach you, you know, none of those kinds of thoughts ever enter the consciousness of a truly liberated guru. Everything that the guru does is as an instrument for God. There's another place in this book where Swami Kriyananda talks about his first meeting with Yogananda. And Yogananda said to him, I asked Divine Mother, and she told me I should see you. That's the reason I'm seeing you. He had been told, Kriyananda, that there was a long wait. I forget now exactly, I think it was many months before he could have a private interview with Yogananda. And so Yogananda said this to him as a way of setting the stage that everything he did, it was because Divine Mother, as he liked to refer to God, Divine Mother asked him to do it, guided him to do it. There was in that same conversation, Yogananda explained there had been a woman from Europe who'd come all the way from Europe just to see him. And he didn't feel the inner guidance from Divine Mother that he was to see her. And so he didn't. And I imagine she got put on the waiting list. I don't know. He didn't explain what the rest of that story was. But the point I'm trying to make is that a true guru acts only in accordance to the wishes of God. And so often uh, the saints, the gurus, they these great ones, they are perplexing in their actions. People, you know, find them very odd, oftentimes eccentric, because they don't fit the way that our reasoning minds thinks, think that they should fit. They don't act in the way that we think they might act, they're going to act. That was one of the amazing things that I found in living with 
uh, Swami Kriyananda, the author of this book, the direct disciple of Yogananda, that I just knew that whatever the challenges were that were in front of us, he almost never, I'm going to say totally never, reacted to those challenges in ways that I could imagine or even begin to dream of. It was rather fun when you think of it that way. At least I thought it was fun. I had dedicated my life long ago to, well, to living my life for God and to enjoying watching that unfold in ways that I never expected. And so that's what Yogananda was saying to this woman. God is the Guru because he, Yogananda, he used to say, I killed Yogananda long ago. Only God dwells in this body now. And that was the point that he was making to this guest. Joy to you, and we'll see you again on Thursday. Blessings.